Well, this hour is almost gone, and I'm amazed. I'm trying not to step on our microphone, man. I am amazed at how quickly this hour has gone, and I feel like we have not yet begun. Hopefully, we will be able to take a little time, not take a little time, if, if there is time before the production tonight to do another program, I'd like to. Joe, you said you had a story that was worth hearing. Well, my wife, uh, Sue Conley, has a part of Agnes, and she plays a uh, 77-year-old woman who has... Um, who's quite ill and her husband beats her and she ends up in the hospital um, she came to the play before I did and she brought the script home and I read through the script and the very first thing that happened to me when I read the script is I got angry uh, what happens to these women really angered me I was really surprised how angry I got and then I uh, I didn't have a part at that point and apparently they had two positive male roles in the play uh, one is Dave the painter the guy who helps get the place ready and then the cop and uh, they apparently, several people tried out and it didn't work out, so I got both parts. Well, during one of the first... You mean you mean in the whole play there were only two good men and yeah. you had to play them both? Yeah. That says yeah. something, you know? Yeah. Uh, but um, the very first dress rehearsal, my wife uh, put on these horrible bruises. Yeah. And uh, we stopped at a, at a place to get a pop and I didn't think anything of it. And we stopped, I got out, and I went in, and she's sitting in the car, and all the people that got out of the car around us kept looking at my wife, and said there were some very sympathetic things said. Of course, I went into the store, just oblivious to all this. I came out, and people stared at me. They, some ugly things were said, and finally I got in the car, and I realized, she's got all these bruises on her faces, and that's what they're responding to. You know, which really caught us by surprise. You know, though, that's a very hopeful story because it's, it's the same as the other story about going over to the torch. Here out in the real world, and Lord knows we all have, you know, so many problems. And, and it's, like, it's like with children. I mean, you could do, I have two kids, and I could do everything they wanted, and it wouldn't be enough. I could do nothing but what they wanted 24 hours a day, and they still would want more. Uh, and, and the world sometimes is like that. It's like, you know, if you did everything you you could, it would just be like water in the desert. And yet here, two small little little anecdotes. And yet there, maybe it's part of what this effort is about, to heighten people's sensitivity and awareness to situations where people won't look the other way. They will say something. And I can remember during the, uh, the Brezhnev here in the Soviet Union when people would be, you know, just grabbed off the streets. One of the stories was about this old woman who the KGB came up and she grabbed onto a lamppost and started yelling and they backed off and walked away and left her. And, you know, sometimes all you need to do is speak up, say something. One of the things that happened... Uh I know with Tony's character and with Agnes, is my wife's character, uh, both of them have nowhere to go. And when the shelter closes for the day, they're only cho they have two choices. One is to go out on the street, which neither of them can do, or to go home. And they are left with very few alternatives. And it's really that that part really angers me and makes me want to do something. You know, we are out of time, and. Uh, by the time this airs, the show will have finished its run. Are there any plans to uh, do another production of this show that people may have a chance to see? No. We hope so. We'd love to if someone would ask. We'll be here. Oh, hold, let me, angel. <laughs> let me get over to Suzanne. This may be our last comment because I think I'm about to get the, the cutoff sign. I don't know if this is out of place, but I understand that a call mistakenly went to the Buckham Alley Theater where the Michigan Council for Churches in the area had requested that this play tour the county. Um, and I know also that the Actors Theater in Louisville has requested a copy of the script and so it has life, potential life after Flint. All right. And it's time, we're going to have to wrap it up. Thank you very much for all of you. Uh, this has been a fascinating program. I hope we're, we're going to see if we've got time to do another one because we've just begun to talk about uh, this production and everything else. So on behalf of uh, all of the cast and the crew of Helter Shelter and Hometown Magazine, this is Michael Kelly saying thank you for your time.